Welcome back to the channel. Um, in this video, we are going to look at another way to solve the same problem I solved in the previous video, which is the adjoint of a linear transformation. If you haven't watched that video, the link is down in the description. Make sure you watch that video before you watch this one. It, it will give you a rough idea of how um, a self-adjoint of transformation is defined, um, the basic definition, and how we are now simplifying the process by using this method um, taught in this video. So now let's get right into it. So we are looking for the, um, the adjoint of this transformation, which is basically this transformation T star from R cube to R cube. Now, how do we find this? Um, now there's a theorem that states the relationship between T and T star in, through a matrix method. And that's what we're going to use for the solution of this particular problem. So the first thing that we're going to do is to find the matrix of transformation relative towards standard basis for our Q. And this is always very useful. So what I mean by that is we need to find T of 0, 0, um, T of 1, 0, 0, T of 0, 1, 0, and T of what? 0, 0, 1. So, so this basically means our x is one, y is zero, and z is zero. Now, when we when we impute that into this match, um, into this transformation, we'll have the first component to be one because x is one there, y is zero, z is zero. So we have one plus zero plus zero. So we have one. In the second component, we have one as well. In the third component, we also have one. Very very nice. Now for t of zero one zero, it means our y is one, x is zero, and z is zero. So when we look at that, we basically have the first component to be one, second component to be two, and third component to be two. And for the last one, when z is one and the rest is zero, we have one in the first component and the second component we have two, third component we have three. So therefore we can write the matrix of transformation. The rows, because we are using standard basis, um, we're just going to write the rows of this um, of these vectors as a column in this matrix. So this will be one, one, one. The next one will be one, two, two. And the third row will be written as what? One, two, three. Now, this is the matrix of transformation relative to what standard basis for R3 for this transformation. Now, what basically, um, um, what happens with um, adjoint of this transformation? The matrix, so, so we are talking about this, right? Now, it so happens that the theorem says, so there's a theorem that says um, the, the matrix of this transformation, okay, so the matrix of transformation for T star is just the transpose. Um, so I would say transpose of A. Right, so we need to find a transpose, and this will give us the matrix of transformation for T star. So, as you can see, if you duly um, observe, you see that what this matrix is actually symmetric, right? It's actually symmetric. And later on, we're going to learn that what a matrix of transformation being symmetric means that that transformation is self-adjoint. So, another thing that you can see here is what um, T is self-adjoint. And why is this the case? Because um, A is symmetric, right? Which means A, uh, which means the matrix of A and um, the, um, the matrix, the matrix of T and the matrix of T star relative to standard basis will be the same, right? So when we find the transpose of this, transpose basically means we write the column as a row vector. So the first column we can write it as the first row of this um, transpose matrix. Now the second column will be written as the second row and the third column will be written as the third row, okay? So this is the second column, this is the third. We write it as what, row vectors, right? And if you see exactly A transpose is equal to what, A, right? So because of this, it is quite easy now to find T transpose. Um, so um, this, transform this transformation can now be found using the matrix of transformation which is basically, um, so if I want to find T of any vector R in R, so remember that what UVW is a vector in R cube because this is from R cube to R cube, right? Now, if I want to find this, this is basically just multiplying the matrix of transformation 
with this vector, right? With the column vector UV double. So when you do this, um, you can be sure that what you're going to have um, U plus V plus W in the first one, which is this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this plus one times W. That's, that will give you U plus V plus W. Now the next one will be, so um, of course you're going to obtain um, column vector um, as your answer at first, then you have to now, um, if you write it as uh, in relation to standard basis for arrow cube, then you have the whole version. So what we do next is we multiply the second um, the second row with this with the same column U V W. So one times U that will be U. Two times V two V. Two times W two W. And finally, we multiply the third row with the same vector. So we have U plus two V plus three W. Now, if you write this as um, in relation to the basis for R cube, remember the basis for R cube as well is E1, E2, E3, okay? So because of that, um, we can basically write this vector as what? As U plus V plus W um, times E1 plus U plus 2V plus 2W times E2 plus finally U plus 2V plus 3W times E3. And as you can imagine, this will just be the same vector in a row form. Right? So, so therefore we are done, right? So this is the adjoint transformation. So let me put T star here. So this is T star, right? So that is how we solve this problem. And this will be the end of this particular um, video. And now, if you have any particular request, comment below on what type of question you would want me to solve next so that I can make the video for you. So I'll see you guys in the next video.